There's not many heroes in Overwatch who have an entire playstyle named after them, but Lucio and the Reddit Lucio have been a staple of Overwatch since the early days. Flying into the backline, dueling anyone and everyone and generally being a pest, that's what many expect from Lucio players. But is that still the best way to play him? To find out, I decided to spend an entire week playing Lucio only, including getting coached by one of the world's best Lucio players. The first thing anyone talks about with Lucio is always his wall riding, and they're right to. This shit is hard. Anyone who spends any serious amount of time playing Lucio will definitely have a few fails along the way. Bro, the Magno bullshit. Get over, get over! Oh. Okay, a lot of fails. Jesus Christ. No! I think I'm safe. No, I'm not. Okay, a lot and lot of fails. Still, something like this just takes practice. And practice, I was getting plenty of as I grinded on this account which started off in gold. It was quite peaceful actually. Literally no one said a single word in team chat or voice chat or anything. So I just got to grind my mechanics quite peacefully for the first day. I thought, hey, this Lucio journey might just be quite straightforward. Oh boy, was I wrong. If you've been following this series where I learn heroes for a week, you'll have seen me getting called, well, every bad name in the book. As a content creator, you have to have thick skin if you want to survive when every day people are saying all kinds of nasty stuff to you on stream or in your YouTube comments. So when I tell you that I got abused and insulted in this one week playing Lucio more than I have ever done before, that might shock you because it shocked me. If you'd asked me that out of Wrecking Ball, Sombra and Lucio, which hero would I get flamed most for playing? I would never have guessed Lucio and yet, it turns out, once I left gold and entered the magical world of Plat, people will literally treat you playing Lucio like you're throwing their game. I could not believe the reactions people were having. There were two kinds of flaming. There was the people who just didn't understand the hero, who wanted me to play Lucio like a heel bot, just stay on the heel song and AFK with my frontline, or as one teammate comically called it, the yellow song. Please use yellow song? YELLOW SONG? PLEASE USE YELLOW SONG! But that's just not how the hero works. The entire reason Lucio is a desired pick is because he is the only hero in Overwatch who can reliably allow his team to go from one place to another super quickly to engage in or run out with his speed boost and speed song. It's why he's been the most dominant pick at pro level across the history of Overwatch. This type of flamer would demand that I play a different support than Lucio, one that does more healing, which just kind of misses the point of how Overwatch works. But what I learned is that in Plat, people just see more stats as more good. My best character? Can we have a heal on now, Lucio? Bruh. So if your healing number isn't high, be prepared to be flamed. In one particularly unhinged game of Numbani, I played Lucio in attack and then on defense, my other support was so mad that I picked Lucio, he took the hero from me and demanded I switch. That's fine, I'll, I'll literally pick Lucio when he goes out of spawn, that's fine. Now you stop that Lucio play, the mi bro I will literally sit in spawn and wait. I assumed that I would just pick a different hero for now, wait outside of spawn and then he'd eventually switch back to what he actually wanted to play when the round was about to start and then I could safely yoink my Lucio pick again. But no, this crazy son of a bitch walked out of spawn as Lucio and played Lucio for the first minute of defense until he died and then switched off Lucio just so that I couldn't play Lucio. I mean, who fucking does that? Of course, I had the last laugh because after he switched, I waited till the next fight was over, jumped off the map, switched back to Lucio, and we won the game easily. Then there was the second type of angry gamer, and this was the one that was really hard to bear. I was getting called racial slurs and having people literally throw my game because I dared to pick Lucio. I bet you're a dog shit, shit nigger in your life. This game on Parisu, for example, so our tank pick Hog and just AFK for the entire attack because he didn't like that I picked Lucio. And this wasn't the only occasion. This Li Zhang Tower game was another hilarious example where I booped like four people off of the map in just one round, but my Arisa player was still so mad that they threw the game and stopped playing because they wanted me to be reported for playing Lucio. There's no way these guys are real, dude. There's no way these guys are real. Multiple times I had teammates who actually just gave up and stopped playing because they thought Lucio was a bad pick. When did this happen? 
When did Lucio go from being considered almost always a good pick to now just being seen as a throw? No one told me. When did the gold and diamond ranks have a meeting and decide this? What the hell? Like I said, as a content creator, I'm used to listening to all kinds of views and laughing it off for some entertaining content for my viewers, but I just couldn't take it anymore. I actually had to do what I always recommend you should do when you want to climb in Overwatch. I muted all text and voice chats. And wow, was it so much better. I knew my teams were probably still mad at me for playing Lucio, but now with blissful silence around me, I could actually focus on the game and play it how I wanted to. I didn't have to listen to the ridiculous advice of my team or get upset when they were calling me slurs or throwing my game. I feel like Lucio himself would probably do this. I just put on some jamming tunes, mind my own business and vibed out. And guess what? All those people flaming me for apparently being shit, I managed to outrank them very easily, climbing up to diamond in no time once I just focused on me. Still, mostly what I did to climb was dual people. I wasn't going full reddit Lucio in the backline, but I found that nobody knew what speed boost does anymore. I wanted us to engage on him from behind. No matter how many times I tried to amp speed my team forward, they just stand there playing patty cake. So the actual essential part of Lucio, the reason he was so strong at the highest levels of Overwatch, his coordinated movement was completely useless down in the reality of the game. So I just had to fight my way out, trading kills and doing it for myself. But I knew this wasn't all there could be. It still felt like with so many powerful DPS and tanks around who just killed people faster, there had to be a better way to get value out of Lucio. And so that's when I called on one of the world's leading experts in Reddit Lucioing. Frogger is part of the pantheon of legendary Lucio creators and one of the most well known in the art of the Reddit Lucio. His YouTube videos and Twitter memes are always hilarious and almost always feature him getting just a little bit silly on the froggy boy. So when I asked him to coach me, I fully expected to be schooled in the dark arts of trolling in the backline. But to my absolute shock, that's not what he told me at all. I don't know, the DPS playstyle is kind of like dead at the moment. Mm -hmm. Probably might go alive again in season four. I don't know, like depending on what patch notes we get and stuff. When the chieftain of the Reddit playstyle tells you that it's dead, you have to stand up and listen. And so Frogger told me that actually the way to get more value as Lucio was to try to do less. See, up until now, I was trying to do the absolute most, get as much dueling in as possible, get as many frags, and disable particularly as many DPS as possible. Frogger's focus, meanwhile, was elsewhere, on the tanks. Lucio has the fantastic ability to control the tank v tank matchup by just enabling his tank a lot, whether he realizes it or not. If the enemy tank was vulnerable, Frogger told me to boop him out of position or just pump damage into them to farm beat. I think against, I think Sig is like a really good matchup for Lucio because, especially if it's Sig versus Sig, I, I don't know, I think a lot of people sleep on it, right? That you can just keep pushing the Sig into your team, uh, mm -hmm. past his own shield, so he has to drop it, like, most of the time. Like, once that shield's out, you know, he's gonna have to drop it, he's gonna, like, one second cooldown or something like that on it. Yeah. You can boop him past the shield into your shield, right? So then he's cut off from healing, but then he has to just disengage, Then he has to shift, grasp, to run away, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. But like once he's shifting, you know, you can still damage him with boop and melee. That's why I'm like, this is like the best matchup for Lucio in terms of like tanks, I think. Like he, you know, he, he poses no threats except for the rock and uh, one shot combo. I think, I think you're better off just trying to like farm beat and then winning off that. Okay. Because yeah, they do have a mercy sense. pocket. Oh, big, big. oh, this is great. This is good. Yeah, just get in there now. Like mercy's dead. You can go for the ash and go for the Ana. Start disrupting stuff. Good, good, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, diva. This is great. Just farm all charge off her. Just keep shooting her. She okay. is so easy to hit. I just love. Fu what the fuck? <laughs> and it really was all about the beat with Lucio. No pun intended. While in coordinated play, the speed boost is so powerful, in solo play, it's often wasted. But what teammates can't waste is a crap ton of free HP. So rather than trying to fight all the time, Frogger got me to play more safe and with my team to build beat as quickly as possible, then use beat to engage aggressively and make a play afterwards. I my, Look, my problem with Lucio beating is that I'm way too, I hesitate way too much. It's either like, right. but at the same time, it's like, you know, uh, it's, it's better off to just like, you might as well be like, you know, you might as well just go for it. And then if it's terrible, then you learn from it, you know? And if my tank was struggling to fight a particular DPS, 
then I would help them by booping and pressuring that DPS off of my tank, like Reaper, who so often shreds your frontline. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You can you can just constantly use boop to just not let any like their team is so close range, so you can literally just play to um just get it like the Reaper and the Reinhardt off your uh, tanks. Honestly, I was shocked. This was the last advice I was expecting from Frogger, but he was totally right. And once I played more for staying alive and farm B as often as I could, I saw my impact shoot up massively and I started to climb super quickly. In fact, where I thought Lucio was bad to climb with, Frogger showed and told me it was the opposite. But no, yeah, you'll definitely see like, I think you'll climb super quickly because Lucio is probably like one of the easiest supports to climb on. I'm sorry, I'm, don't uh, hate me for saying that. He's very easy to climb on. <laughs> Damn, what a plot twist. So, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out the Reddit Lucio is well and truly dead. I mean, mechanics play a huge part in Lucio. Not only do you need to be able to wall ride well, something I still struggled to pull up consistently by the end of the week, but you also need to be able to land your shots and contribute to damage while building your ult. I still firmly believe that if you want to get out of the metal ranks as Lucio, then you do need to duel people, get kills, and win fights for your team that way. But overall, the value of Lucio isn't most to be found in his speed or his survivability, it's in the powerhouse of his ultimate, which pretty much guarantees your team a fight win if you do it right, and allows you the chance to go for something aggressive with much less risk involved, thanks to your extra HP. Playing Lucio like this, it became almost boringly easy. And boring is definitely the word. Because while I got the hang of Lucio by the end of the week, I didn't have a huge amount of fun. I was expecting to be riding around and getting funny clips that I could laugh at with my chat and you guys, but instead, I was just quietly enabling my frontline while they flamed me, only to play around my ultimate every couple minutes. So maybe we all meme about Reddit Lucio, and maybe we all hate when we get one of those guys on our team, but I'm kinda sad that's not a viable playstyle anymore, because Lucio in his current state is kinda uninspiring. So for now, when I lock support, I don't think I'll be picking much Lucio. I think I'll stick to my Zen on a bap and actually have fun rather than be bored to death while winning. Sorry, Frogger. So that's all I got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Next in the hero learning journey will be Overwatch's newest hero, Life Weaver, which you can expect to drop sometime in the next 10 days or so. But after that, who do you want to see me learn next? Tell me in the comment section and if you want to watch this journey live, come join me at twitch.tv forward slash svb underscore. But that's it from me. A big shout out to my Patreons who do the awesome job supporting me. And I'll see you guys very, very soon.